ClearCast. Well, I've got a list of uh, what I use and starts with the mold. You need a tube in mold. Right? That tube in mold could be a universal type or could be a specific mold. Uh, this one here is the Sierra. I do, uh, I do a lot uh, of uh, Sierra castings of uh, tube in um, Sierra tubes. So this one here is our 4.0 model. Um, you can cast four at a time. The plugs do go through the sides and suspend the tube within the cavity. Um, we'll go over that when we do the casting. But you need a mold of some type. You need resin. And as I've said before, uh, my resin of choice is Alumalite Clear or Clear Slow. Uh, I, I get great results with it. It's easy to turn. Um, and uh, so we, uh, that, that's mostly, I have all the different types of resins in my shop, but this is the one I use the most, is the urethane, Alumalite Clear. You need a label, whatever you're gonna cast. For the demo today, I'm gonna do uh, our P-Town Subby logo. And uh, the, um, this logo is printed on weatherproof labels from onlinelabels.com. So you go to onlinelabels.com, you look for the weatherproof matte finish, not the gloss. I've had a lot of people try to tell me, well, why not gloss? That doesn't make sense. It's gotta be, it's gotta be gloss. The gloss finish is a smooth, slick finish. Your resin has a tough time adhering to it. So when you press in your pen kit components, a lot of times you'll get uh, separation between the resin and the, uh, and, and the label because the label will slide away from the resin. Matte finish, a little bit rougher finish. You can't see it with the eye, but it's a scratched finish. It will adhere better to the resin. So trust me on this one. We've tried both weatherproof matte finish labels for inkjet is what you want. The specific label that we use here at P-Town Subby is the OL9805WJ, and that's the seven and a half by 10, so it's a full sheet. And we print and cut out from that full sheet. Um, it seems to work best for what we do. All right, next thing you need is a label template. All right, that shows up pretty good. So this label template is made out of uh, uh, plexiglass and is cut to the size of the label that you need to fit around a Sierra tube. These are tube specific, and you can see there 1.33 by 2.25 is the label size. So um, you'll need that to put down on your label to then cut it out. So um, to cut it out, you need an X-Acto knife. So you want a sharp X-Acto knife and you just wanna make sure you're careful with this. Rolling jig. This is something we designed and came up with original here to P-Town Subby. And it basically gives you a 90 degree to index your label in your tube. If your label does not go on the tube directly vertical, or perpendicular, whichever way you want to think about it. It doesn't run directly up the tube, but has a little bit of an angle to it. When you go to roll it, it'll be closed on one side and open on the other because it isn't put on the tube uh, with the correct orientation. This little device here will make your life so much easier when you go to roll tubes. Um, so, uh, it's just, uh, you know, it, it's called a rolling jig and it, uh, it, it, it's a convenience. It's not required, but I'm telling you, it makes your life easy. Um, we need a scale to, to measure our resin because our resin that we use is, uh, measured by weight, uh, one part A to one part B. You need a cup. Um, and for this one here, I'm only going to use the little four ounce cup, uh, 
It's not a lot of resin that we're gonna be pouring, so I don't need a big cup. I need stir sticks, so I have all my stir sticks here. I have the uh, um, popsicle stick, the tongue depressor size, and uh, so those are, the, those are the types that I use in the shop mostly. Um, need rubber gloves, goggles, um, pressure pot, and your pot rack to put it in the pot. Um, pot rack's not required, but it makes it convenient. Um, I can cast up to, let's see, 48, let's see, 16, um, eight by four, now 32, I can cast 32 Sierra tubes in my, uh, in my pressure pot at one time. Um, and uh, it works out great. It, uh, it, it, it works great for production casting. Um, so tubes, you need tubes. What kind of tubes do I use? I use the smooth tubes. I don't like the tubes that are pre roughed for this type of, uh, um, this type of project. The pre roughed tubes or tubes that are sanded have a tendency to not stick well with the labels. And if you think about it, it's less surface area that the label is in contact with. A smooth tube, the label doesn't have to extend across uh, scratches. It is adhering to every piece of that tube. It just seems to adhere better. So I use the unsanded uh, tubes whenever I can. You can use black tubes, you can use white tubes, doesn't matter. Um, I just use the straight up uh, brass tubes. Um, color tubes are not really required for uh, color casting. So this is what we need. You also see here, I have some scissors just in case um, you don't like using uh, uh, the X-Acto knife to cut off the excess on the end of the tube. Um, I use the X-Acto knife, but you can use scissors if you desire. That's what we need. Let's see if we can't get started. So anytime I start working with my label where I'm gonna have my hands on it, uh, I, I usually put rubber gloves on. Uh, reason for that is I haven't experienced it, but some people's oils in their hands very, uh, are very reactive and will leave like fingerprints on your label or will cause separation due to lack of adhesion. So, this is an insurance policy. So I usually put, um, I usually put gloves on anytime I start working with labels. Makes it a little more cumbersome, but um, it, 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 it makes it a little bit better for your label. So I've taken my label template and I've placed it on my picture because I can see through it where, where I want to cut. Then I take my X-Acto knife and I just run it down the side of my, temp my template on all four sides. And I'm on a self-healing mat, by the way, so that I don't, um, you know, cut into something or it doesn't grab and pull my X-Acto knife the wrong way or, you know, anything like that. All right, so when I'm done cutting all sides, pull that apart, and there is my, my template uh, or my label that I cut out. So now comes the harder part, because you have gloves on, is getting that label to separate from the adhesive backing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and set up, and that is um, I put my uh, um, put my tube there on my rolling jig that I'm going to use. All right, so oh, that one was actually pretty easy. So separate it, and now here comes the uh, the interesting part. You want your tube to sit flush against this end, and you you. You, you lower it down till it hits and then back it off just a little bit because you want a little overlap. And then you take your label itself 
make sure that it's tight against the bottom when you're sliding, right? And you slide your label along the bottom until it hits the tube and then roll the tube slightly. You can see I'm rolling the tube slightly. So what I like to do is roll that really hard right there to make sure you get a good sit seating of that label, All right? Now I just roll and if all turned out well, I don't have any gaps. If you have gaps, you'll see tube, All right? And so now I have a little bit of overhang to cut off because it's, uh, the, the label is a little bit longer than the tube. So I just take my X-Acto knife and I just run it along the edge right there. See that little twist coming off? That's it, right there. That's all there is to that. And then you just wanna make sure you roll that edge really hard back and forth where um, where the seal is between the labels, all right? So that's one done. Um, I have some pre-cut, which is gonna speed things up a little bit. Um, so take my label or take my tube, put it down here. Get my pre-cut label off of here. My wife pre-cuts them for me because she does most of this uh, label casting for us. If there's a label cast that needs to be done, it's probably done by her. She sets up all the labels and then I, uh, I do all the casting. So put your, uh, put your label along the edge, slide it up till it hits the tube and then start to roll. And then I pull the tube out a little bit. Oh, that one flipped away from me. And, uh, I, I roll that edge really hard to make sure that it uh, it stays down and then roll. That's all there is to it. Cut off the excess. Pretty quick and easy with the right materials. So that's it right there. Two of them. Uh, Two of them rolled in a pretty short period of time. Um, you can roll more if you want, uh, but uh, for the demo, I think that's a pretty good uh, showing of how the uh, label sizing template and the rolling jig, uh, how they work in tandem. So now we'll move on to how do we put this in the mold. off my area here and uh, uh, what I have remaining is my mold, my plugs, my scale, my tubes, my cup, and my stir sticks. I got my resin sitting off to the side, I got my pressure pot, and I have my mold rack. So all these things is what I need to go forward um, and I also have a sharpie marker so I can mark on my cup how much resin I put in it. Um, so now it's time to set up uh, so I can put my tubes in my, uh, in my mold. So I start by inserting one side of the plugs. And I'm going to cast these right next to each other. You can cast them, you know, every other, uh, the ends, whatever you're comfortable with doing. It doesn't really matter. Um, and now comes label or uh, uh, overlap up, overlap down. Uh, honestly, I've done both. Uh, I've never had issues with either. Um, I personally believe the key is you have to roll this seam before you put it in the mold. And then I cast with seam up. Why? Because it's easier to see if the label has lifted. So I just insert it in onto that uh, one 
uh, stopper that I've already inserted. So I roll the edge really hard. And then I insert one end onto the plug that I've already inserted. Take my plug, insert it in the other end. Take the other plug, insert it in the other end. And now watch the mold really closely when I let go. You see how the edge right here is pushed in? When I let go of it, it's gonna pop out. And it didn't. All right, it usually pops out like that, okay? This is what you need to do to seat these plugs. Because if you leave it just like that, it's not seated, it's gonna come out. So you have to use your thumbs and you push in on the plugs and you pull out on the upper part of the mold. And what you're doing there is you see how that mold now is flexed outward? That means that the silicone is trying to get back to the center because it's flexed out and it, want, it wants to come back in. So what it's doing is taking those plugs and seating them even harder into that, uh, um, into the tube. So thumbs on the, uh, on the stoppers, push in and pull out on the upper. So you see there how that is bowed outward. That's what you wanna see when you uh, get ready to do your cast. Um, if you don't see that, you need to pull the top of those molds out a little bit further. You're not gonna hurt the plugs, you're not gonna hurt the mold. But what it does do is make sure that your plugs are seated uh, adequately. So, I know that I need 22 grams of resin to pour a single cavity of this Sierra mold with this Sierra tube. So, 22, multiply it by two, 44 grams, and I know I have a two-part resin, one part A, one part B, which means 22 grams of part A and 22 grams of part B is what I need. Now, unlike color casting, once my clear cast is mixed, I mix it till I think it's thoroughly mixed, and then pour it. Don't wait for a temperature. Do not wait for temperature on clear. Mix it thoroughly and pour it. That's it. You want to get it into the pot so that any bubbles that are going to form can form and come out of solution. You're not worried about color separation because it's all clear. So um, I'm going to put 22 grams of resin in this cup. Get my paper towels ready. Hang on. All right, 22. Nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. All right, now that I've used this um, resin, I set it off to the side so I don't use it again. Don't want to do a part A, part A, or part B, part B. Um, since I'm pouring right away, I'm not going to write down the 22 on here like I normally would because I know I need 22 grams. So um, if I if I had multiple cups, I'd write the uh, number on there. So I'm going to zero it out. Going to pour in the other part. To 22. Cover up my jug. All right, since it's a small cup, I'm gonna use my smaller um, popsicle stick instead of the big tongue depressor. Just makes it easier to get into the corners. 
You just want to make sure you get a thorough mix. Scrape the sides as you're working along. So my guess is I probably mixed about 30 seconds. So don't be easy with mixing. You can see I'm mixing pretty hard. You're not worried about the amount of bubbles you're putting in solution because you're gonna, you're, you're gonna put it under pressure. Those bubbles are gonna get collapsed. So I'm good, I'm good with mixing. As long as you mix hard, you, you should be good. So now I'm just gonna pour and I pour into one spot, let the resin do the rest of the work till it forms all the way around and to the top. There we go, forms around all the way to the top. And if I have a little resin left over, I can go back to the other one. But what I don't like to do is scrape the cup because if you scrape the cup, you could get a little bit of part A or part B that's unmixed um, that you put in your casting. So you can see there are bubbles on the top of that, but that's not a big deal. Those turn away. So I put this onto my pressure pot rack and you wanna fill the rack from the bottom up. So you take a pressure pot rack, put it in your pressure pot, make sure that it's sitting in there level so that you don't get resin to run off to one side or the other. Line up my line on my pressure pot and then tighten it down by hand. This is again, Harbor Freight pressure pot I've had for 13 years. This is the older of the two. Does have a little bit of a leak on it, but uh, you know, the uh, length of time it takes for this resin to cure, it doesn't really affect it too bad. It goes down a couple of pounds, but. All right, so there we go. We're tight. Let me turn this around so I can see it. So we're at about 37 pounds, um, more than enough for a, uh, a tube in cast. So we'll wait an hour and a half to uh, 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 or so. And uh, I always leave them in there a little longer than what the uh, requirement is. The requirement's an hour. But uh, me, um, I'm in no rush most of the time. And uh, so, We'll come back and I'll uh, pull them out of the pressure pot, show you how I demold them, and uh, um, see what we got. All right, so it's been about an hour and a half or so since we completed our uh, clear casting portion of our demo. Um, so I'm going to grab the pressure pot and I'm going to put it up on the counter here so that we can uh, demold. So uh, if you got your volume up, you might want to turn it down. It may be a little bit loud because I'm going to vent off the pressure pot. All right, here we go. And then we take our wrench and just uh, loosen up the, uh, the wing nuts. So, our uh, casting is cured. You can see that. So, uh, we'll take and um, show you how you demold these. Um, looks good. There looks like there's a bubble on the top of this, but it's all the way at the top and it should turn away no problem.
So um, best way that I have found to demold these is to have a little uh, little tool. You can use a little screwdriver. I've got this. Uh, this came from a Harbor Freight set. Um, and uh, uh, what you want to do is you only need this if, you know, the, uh, the eyelet comes out. Um, but what I do is I wiggle this, and by wiggling it, it, it releases and works its way out. Some are harder than others, but uh, I find that to be the easiest way to get these stoppers out. And you can even hear it crackle as you, uh, as you do that. And then I just take the mold and flex and grab a side. Flex, grab a side. So um, that's it. The uh, label stayed down, looks good all the way around. This one here too, label stayed down. If you see, you might be able to see it, you might not. There, there is a bubble right on the very top. I can feel it with my fingers, but when I look through the side, yeah, it's well towards the top. It, that will not be an issue. And I always seem to see the surface bubbles never break. Um, it, uh, yeah, it's just something, it never breaks. But uh, plenty of resin on the side to be able to mill those off and uh, make these into decent pens. So um, hopefully you've learned something in this demo. Uh, hopefully your tube in casts go um, well. If uh, you run into issues that you can't figure out, by all means, hit us up on Facebook or hit us up with an email on our website. Do what I can to help out. Um, I have a lot of experience helping people through tube in uh, and casting problems in general. Um, casting can be finicky. You, uh, you need to make sure you uh, uh, document everything you do. Conditions should stay the same. Um, it's all about repeatability, repeatability, repeatability. If you can repeat from one cast to the next and your process stays the same, um, you, you should be able to have uh, no issues casting. The, uh, the biggest issue people have is something changed in their process or the environmental conditions changed or you know, it, it could be just about anything. The slightest little thing uh, could, could set it off. Um, I work in a temperature controlled shop. I run a dehumidifier 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Um, that's the only way I can keep humidity down in my shop to a uh, manageable level. So uh, keep your conditions constant. Your castings will come out great. If you have questions, let us know. Uh, and I hope your uh, casting experience is, uh, is great. Send us some pictures of what you cast and uh, we'll post them on our website as uh, uh, examples of what people are doing. So uh, have a great time, push the boundaries and uh, show us what you got. Thank you.